Hello there, everyone. This module is the first part of our series about cardiovascular regulatory mechanisms. This one is about baroreceptors. Let's start with a quick introduction. Baroreceptors are regulatory mechanisms responsible for maintaining a constant value of arterial pressure. These mechanisms closely monitor mean arterial pressure, or PA, and compare it with the set point value of approximately 100 millimeters of mercury. If the mean arterial pressure, or PA, increases above or decreases below the set point, the cardiovascular system makes adjustments in cardiac output, in total peripheral resistance, or TPR, or in both, attempting to return the mean arterial pressure to the set point value. The mean arterial pressure, or PA, is regulated by two major systems. The first system is neurally mediated and is known as the baroreceptor reflex. The baroreceptor reflex attempts to restore mean arterial pressure to its set point value in a matter of seconds. The second system is hormonally mediated and includes the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which regulates mean arterial pressure more slowly, primarily by its effect on blood volume. Let's take a closer look at the baroreceptor reflex. The baroreceptor mechanisms are fast, neurally mediated reflexes that attempt to keep the arterial pressure constant via changes in the output of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems to the heart and blood vessels. Pressure sensors, called the baroreceptors, are located within the walls of the carotid sinus and the aortic arch and relay information about blood pressure to cardiovascular vasomotor centers in the brainstem. The vasomotor centers, in turn, coordinate a change in output of the autonomic nervous system to affect the desired change in mean arterial pressure. Thus, the reflex arc consists of sensors for blood pressure, afferent neurons, which carry the information to the brainstem, brainstem centers, which process the information and coordinate an appropriate response, and efferent neurons, which direct changes in the heart and blood vessels. Let's talk about the baroreceptors. The baroreceptors are mechanoreceptors located in the adventia of the walls of the carotid sinus, where the common carotid artery bifurcates into the internal and external carotid arteries and the aortic arch. The carotid sinus baroreceptors are responsive to increases or decreases in arterial pressure, whereas the aortic arch baroreceptors are primarily responsive to increases in arterial pressure. The baroreceptors are sensitive to pressure or stretch. Thus, changes in arterial pressure cause more or less stretch on the mechanoreceptors, resulting in a change in their membrane potential. Such a change in membrane potential is a receptor potential, which increases or decreases the likelihood that action potentials will be fired in the afferent nerves that travel from the baroreceptors to the brainstem. If the receptor potential is depolarizing, then action potential frequency increases. If the receptor potential is hyperpolarizing, then the action potential frequency decreases. Note that the strongest stimulus for the baroreceptors is a rapid change in arterial pressure. Let's look at the clinical link. The sensitivity of the baroreceptors can be altered by disease. For example, in chronic hypertension or elevated blood pressure, the baroreceptors do not see the elevated blood pressure as abnormal. In such cases, the hypertension will be maintained rather than corrected by the baroreceptor reflex. The mechanism of this defect is either decreased sensitivity of the baroreceptors to increases in arterial pressure or an increase in the blood pressure set point of the brainstem centers. This is an example of receptor adaptation. A resetting of the reflex in the central nervous system, or CNS, occurs as well. Next, we'll learn about the baroreceptor reflex's response to increased arterial pressure. The sinus nerve, or herring's nerve, from the carotid sinus, and the aortic nerve, called Sion's nerve, from the aortic sinus, are together called the sinoaortic nerves. They're also referred to as the buffer nerves. Information from the carotid sinus baroreceptors is carried to the brainstem on the carotid sinus nerve, which joins the glossopharyngeal nerve, or cranial nerve 9, and travels to the nucleus tractus solitarius, or NTS. 
Information from the aortic arch bearer receptors is carried to the brainstem on the vagus nerve, or cranial nerve 10, and travels to the nucleus tractus solitarius, or NTS. Therefore, it is evident that the central terminals for these receptors are located in the nucleus tractus solitarii, or NTS, in the medulla oblongata. Neurons from the NTS project to the RVLM and nucleus ambiguous, where they influence the firing of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. The increased action potential traffic reaching the nucleus tractus solitarii leads to excitation of nucleus ambiguous neurons and inhibition of firing of rostral ventrolateral medulla or RVL neurons. This results in increased parasympathetic neural activity to the heart and decreased sympathetic neural activity to the heart and resistance vessels, primarily the arterioles, causing decreased cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. Since the mean arterial pressure is the product of systemic vascular resistance and cardiac output, the mean arterial pressure is returned toward the normal level. This completes a negative feedback loop by which increases in mean arterial pressure can be attenuated. A long-term change in blood pressure resulting from loss of baroreceptor reflex control is called neurogenic hypertension. Conversely, decreases in arterial pressure and decreased stretch of the baroreceptors increase sympathetic neural activity and decrease parasympathetic neural activity, resulting in increased heart rate, stroke volume, and systemic vascular resistance. This returns blood pressure toward the normal level. If the fall in mean arterial pressure is very large, increased sympathetic neural activity to the veins is added to the above responses, causing contraction of the venous smooth muscle and reducing venous compliance. Decreased venous compliance shifts blood toward the central blood volume, increasing right atrial pressure and in turn, stroke volume. Note that the baroreceptor mechanism is the first line of defense in the maintenance of normal blood pressure. It makes the rapid control of blood pressure needed with changes in posture or blood loss possible, but it does not provide for the long-term control of blood pressure. Once these coordinated reflexes reduce the mean arterial pressure back to the set point pressure, that is to 100 millimeters of mercury, then the activity of the baroreceptors and the cardiovascular brainstem centers will return to the tonic or baseline level. Let's check out the clinical link. If the baroreceptors of the carotid sinus are too sensitive, even small stimuli, such as turning the head or the pressure of a shirt collar, can lead to excessive blood pressure reduction and even fainting. This is referred to as carotid sinus syndrome. 